Okay, in the uh, previous uh, lectures, uh, we have discussed about the PLL, the components of the PLL uh, such as a phase detector, VCO, etc. And also, we have discussed about the PLL IC, which is uh, NE slash SE 565. And this PLL is having lot of uh, applications, uh, especially in uh, communication. Okay. Today, we will discuss some of the applications of uh, this PLL. So, the first application is we can use this PLL for uh, performing frequency multiplication or division. That is if input frequency is f s, we can obtain f s by n or n into f s. If you consider the block diagram of the PLL, so the first block will be phase detector. input signal f s then low pass filter error amplifier v c o Here the final output is taken. Now, as I have discussed in the previous lecture, that the output of the VCO and the input of the phase detector they are available as separate uh, pins. Okay. Here you can see that between this 5, 5 is the input of the phase detector, 4 is the output of the VCO, these two are uh, opened. Okay. As I have told in uh, this frequency multiplication application, we have to connect one block such as a frequency uh, divider or divide by n network. So, these two 4 and 5 are not connected. So, we have to connect a block between these 4 and 5. So, our block here is divided by n network. So, if this frequency is f naught here this frequency will be f naught by n. So, we know that at lock what happens? The input frequency and the VCO output in fact, the second input of this phase director will be same. So, f s becomes f naught by n or f naught is equal to f s into n this is what is called frequency multiplication. So, this f naught is equal to n times f s where f s is the input signal frequency output signal frequency is equal to n times f s by properly choosing the n value we can multiply the input frequency by a factor of n basically here divided by n network is a counter you can use a counter i c here. So, by properly choosing this counter, we can set n value. So, n value is actually the modulus of the counter. So, 
so so you can perform the frequency multiplication using pll the second application is frequency translation if want to shift the frequency of the input signal by a small amount then we can use pll to perform this uh, shifting of uh, the frequency of the input signal here basically we will take this pll block diagram this is the phase detector low pass filter error amplifier PCO this is basically the PLL block diagram the component that we have to connect externally are We will use a mixer or the multiplier whose one input frequency is Fs, another is F0. Then low pass filter. These two blocks are external to this uh, PLL, this is PLL block diagram. And the second input of this phase detector, we are going to choose F1, where F1 is much much less than fs this is the amount by which the frequency of vco has to be shifted so mixer is basically a multiplier so the output of this multiplier will be fs plus f naught fs minus f naught we can filter this fs plus f naught by using this low pass filter so output here will be fs minus f naught it lock what happens this frequency and this frequency will be same that is fs minus f0 is equal to f1 implies fs is equal to f0 plus f1 so you are going to shift the input frequency by a small amount of frequency deviation is equal to f1 this is what is called the frequency translation application using phase lock loop the third application is am demodulation or you can also call it detection Before going to draw the block diagram of AM uh, demodulation, first I will discuss some basics of this uh, AM and how this AM will be generated, what are the frequencies uh, present in the AM signal. Modulation is process of carrying this uh, information signal through a high frequency signal called as carrier. So, there will be modulating signal normally audio or video signal this is low frequency signal say FM is the maximum frequency component if it is a uh, audio communication this uh, frequency will be around 20 to 20 kilohertz but this cannot propagate over the long distance because of this low frequency cannot propagate over long distance. So, what we will do is we will take a carrier signal which is high frequency signal which is high frequency signal we 
in amplitude modulation the magnitude of carrier is varied in accordance with modulating signal suppose if this is the modulating signal and this is carrier this is a high frequency signal then amplitude modulated signal will be will be having envelope which is in the form of modulating signal but the frequency is carrier frequency so this envelope we are basically interested uh, in order to demodulate uh, this am signal we have to extract this envelope which is nothing but demodulating signal okay now see in the time domain if we consider in the uh, frequency domain if this is having frequency of fm if this is having frequency of fc then this am signal will be having frequency spectrum this consists of fc as well as fc plus fm and fc minus fm there are different types of the amplitude modulations one is in full am we will transmit both the side bands this is called side band upper side band and this is called lower side band so am signal consists of carrier upper side band and lower side band usb and lsb lower side band but actual information is present in only side bands carrier does not have any information because actual interested is the actual the information is present in fm so there are different types of the techniques where we can suppress the carrier so in one technique called as a dsb sc double side band suppressed carrier as the name implies this will be deleted only these two side bands will be sent through the transmitter so at the receiver from these two side bands we can extract this modulating signal fm so in the other type of the am we will suppress one of these side bands also because here also we have this fm signal here also fm signal is there so one side band is enough to extract the original modulating signal if i suppress this lower side band also then only one side band is left that is called 
एस एस बी सिंगल साइड बैंड मॉडुलेशन सो दिस यू कैन ट्रांसमिट दिस सिग्नल थ्रू एट द रिसीवर सो फ्रॉम दिस सिंगल साइड बैंड वी हैव टू एक्सट्रैक्ट दी ओरिजिनल मॉडुलेटिंग सिग्नल so how to achieve this modulating signal from the am signal using pll if you consider the block diagram of the pll for am demodulation or detection this am is first applied to the pll this is the complete pll and here we require a 90 degrees phase shifter then this is applied to the multiplier whose one input is pll output other input is 90 degrees phase shifter then you have to pass through the low pass filter then you will get demodulated am here we are going to apply am signal if i consider this am as say ssb type of wave form then what will be the frequency here fc plus fm here what is the need of this 90 degrees uh, phase shifter is we know that this uh, pll introduces 90 degrees phase shift okay so now to avoid that we will use 90 degrees phase shift so that the two signals which will be applied for the multiplier these two will be in phase because this introduces 90 degrees phase shift so if i pass this am signal also to 90 degrees phase shifter then this and this signal will be in phase so this output is nothing but vco output inside this pll we have vco vco output we are going to apply to the multiplier if i choose this vco output f not is equal to fc then what will be output of the multiplier this basically gives the sum and different components so here the frequency component is fm plus fc and here the frequency component is fc so output will be fm plus fc plus or minus fc this is equal to fm plus fc minus fc is one component another component is fm plus fc plus fc So here this FC FC will get cancelled. We get FM. And this will be FM plus two FC. This is large frequency. When compared with this FM, so we can uh, use the low pass filter to filter this larger frequency component. So that output will be having frequency of FM, which is the modulating signal. This is how we can uh, demodulate AM. so the fourth application of uh, pll is pll can be used as fsk demodulator we know that the fsk can be uh, modulated by using triplify timer ic where we have seen that there will be two frequencies 
1070 and 1270 this will be used for transmitting logic 0 this to logic 1. So, in FSK if you want to transmit 1 and 0 1 0 like that then this 1 will be transmitted by 1070 signal okay, which is frequency is less means time period will be more this will be something like this and for logic 0 the second frequency which is 1270 for logic 1 again the larger frequency logic 0 smaller frequency like that you can transmit this is logic 1 this is logic 0 because this is having less time period means more frequency this is logic 1 logic 0 so on now this will be given as a input for the fxk demodulator from this we have to obtain the digital data okay this can be performed by using pll so the diagram of the pll as fsk demodulator is this so this first part is fsk generator this you can use using triple five timer which we have already discussed in the earlier lectures here this ic2 is ic 565 which is pll so this part is generator which we have already discussed in the previous lectures so here you will get this type of two signal this is logic 1 logic 0 so on so 1070 hertz and 1270 hertz signals now this will acts as input for the this fsk demodulator here there is a capacitor c3 and r5 we know that uh, the pll will lock with the input uh, frequency after some time okay. so whatever the signal that is coming here PLL locks to input frequency and tracks between two frequencies. That is thousand seventy and twelve seventy. and provides two different DC shifts. at the output of low pass filter. So, we know that uh, the output of low pass filter will be connected to the VCO. This is VC output voltage, and here the frequency of this one varies with the VC. Here you can see that uh, in the circuit diagram, the 7 we are going to take the modulating demodulated output for uh, IC565. So, this will be passed through, through this uh, RC ladder filter which removes the, uh, the larger frequencies. So, we know that uh, if you use a comparator, you will get some frequencies and different frequencies. The larger frequencies can be filtered by using this RC ladder filter. then it is applied as one input for the comparator. The other input here is this is reference output. You can see that for this 565 pin 6 will act as a reference output. So, we are going to choose this reference output as the average of uh, these two DC shifts corresponding to this 1070 you will get some VC1 output of the low pass filter correspond to this let VC2. 
So, we will choose this reference voltage as the average of this VC1 and VC2. So, it depends upon the available signal here. If this is corresponding to 1070, then you will get the output logic 1, correspond to 1270 you will get logic 0. So, you will get here this type of logic 1 and 0s at the output of this. This is how you can demodulate the FSK. So, we will take here this logic 1, this is correspond to logic 0. So, correspond to these two frequencies, you will get two different uh, DC shifts. Okay. The some are higher larger frequencies will be filtered by using this RC ladder filter. So, here we will be having two voltage levels VC1 or VC2 and here reference. So, we are going to choose this as a middle of this VC1 and VC2. So, it depends upon whether this received signal is VC1 or VC2 output will get logic 1 or logic 0. This is how you can demodulate the FSK. Thank you. Mm -hmm.